So if you fly away, he comes back to consciousness, and then his, the villagers come out and they're like, looking around, see if the gods have left. Because we are gods. <laughs> and then they go to like, oh. <laughs> and he looks at and he's like, what, man? It's been a while. So they ask him again, and then he, he, start, he remembers the language, but he hasn't used it in such a long time. It's difficult for him to respond. It takes him a while. And they're asking him these questions like, dude, what happened to you? What are you wearing? Because he's, you know, he's wearing his, his Armani suit. His Italian shoes, and they're asking him, what, you know, what happened to you? Where have you been? They kind of recognize him, but he looks different. You know? But they recognize maybe the soul, but, but the shadows is, is, is quite different. But anyway. So they're asking him these questions, and again, how does he answer back? How does he explain his experience? Yeah, he's been someplace else that the other folks, they just can't understand. They don't even have the language to describe it. Again, he can give a language that approximates what he experienced. He can, talk about the buildings, you can talk about how the people are different colors, you know, but he, he wouldn't even be able to explain anything about the United States. He wouldn't be able to explain anything about there's another country out there, Russia. You know, he, you know, the language just simply wouldn't be there. Because remember, our languages follow our experiences. When we experience something, we give a word to it. They've never experienced these things. They don't have words for them. And so, he tells his story. What do they think about him? He's crazy. Yeah, whatever, man. Well, we're glad you're back anyway, because you might be crazy, but you are crazy. So then they say, let's go for a hunt. So he says, all right, I'll hunt. I don't know. He says, can't we just order a pizza? <laughs> oh, never mind. Just give me, you know, so they give him a spear, and he's still struggling to understand them as they, as they talk, and they go on a hunt, and then they take off running. Now, again, he's been in America for, <laughs> for a while, so he gets about 50 yards with them. <laughs> yeah, he's like, and they're like, well, what are you doing? He's like, oh, go ahead. <laughs> but they, they wait for him, and they're like, what happened to you? And then he catches up with them, and they finally find some kind of a quarry that they're going to kill. Uh, I don't know what they need over there. And they find him a jaguar, let's say. So they say, it's been a while since you've been gone, but you take the first shot. Frozen, the thing just goes bubble, 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 bubble. And this falls flat. Jaguar sees it. Then just then they run away. He's like, oh, that's who's hunting me? Screw it. <laughs> Jaguar is even insulting him. He runs away. And then everybody starts busting up laughing. Oh, my, what the hell was that, dude? What kind of a throw was that? And they're making fun of him. And they're like, you can't even run. But he had trouble throwing it because you know, he's wearing his, his suit still. And you've got to imagine the guy's bothered, right? All that mud now on his Italian shoes. He's not even wearing the right thing. And they're just like, Man, what happened to you? I'll tell you what. If that thing ever comes back and tries to take one of us, we need to kill it. Because as soon as you take it, as soon as, and this guy was one of our best hunters. He's one of our best guys. As soon as it took him away, it brought him back, and now he's a complete idiot. He dresses funny. He can't speak anymore. He can't hunt anymore. He can't do anything useful. You know, that, you know this guy left as a warrior, and he came back as a, as a simp, man. We just need to don't ever let these things take him away again, any of us. And they all agree. If that thing shows back up, we kill it. You follow? You see the analogy. This is the point. The helicopter, all these things, they represent kind of this, this enlightenment that we can receive going up into that intellectual world. Now, if you've experienced those things, how do you come back and tell people about it? You know? And by the way, some of you are going to experience something like this. You're going to, to go off to college, and you're going to study some things. And then you're going to come back, and you might try talking to your family about them. You might try talking to your friends about them. And people are often just going to be like, what's that got to do with anything? You know, you're studying, you know, anthropology or philosophy or these things. Like, is that going to make you money? No, but that's not what I'm interested in. But you're paying a bunch of money to go there. Yeah, well, then you're stupid. You're paying money to go there, and you're not getting money out of it. Money's not the important thing. Oh, God, here he goes. <laughs> Money's not the important thing. You know, of course you're going to say that because you're getting loans and things to go there, so you're not really paying for it. Man, whoever goes to college, is, you're, you're stupid, man. You're going there and not making any money out of it. Yeah, but let me try to explain this to you. Uh, you know, if you, and you'll even start using words that they just simply won't understand concepts. And it's not because they're stupid. It's an important thing. It's not because they're not. It's not because they're stupid. It's because they didn't experience what you've experienced. So now you're trying to come back and relate your experiences to them, to an audience that's kind of hostile towards it, maybe short attention spans. Maybe we'd really rather be someplace else, teaching high school, <laughs> all of these things.
Do you get the idea? Yeah. So that's what's happened. You know, you've been captured. You've been dragged in here against against your will and told that you have to be in this classroom for 60 hours just to have some dude come up here and talk to you about these things and sit there and go, is he still talking? You know? And then once in a while something will hit you maybe where you're like, yeah. You know? Maybe it'll hit you this year. Maybe it's hitting you right now. Maybe it hits you the first semester. Maybe 10 years from now you'll be walking down the street and you're going to stop and go, oh, wait a second. The helicopter. I get it now. <laughs> you know? And then the helicopter's passing. <laughs> <laughs> and as that happens, you see your, your 12th grade English class jumping on you. Scout? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I go back. I want to go back. I think I told you guys, uh, well, if you guys ever run into me and you ask me, how's it going? Or how's my day? I'll usually say the same thing, right? Every day is Christmas. Every day is Christmas. You've heard me say this before. Yeah. One of my students from a couple years ago, actually a few years ago now, she messaged me last, this past week and she said, Took a few years, but I finally got it. I know what that means. Every day is Christmas. I don't know her. Just messaged me and said she understands it. She says now. She said now. I've just got to figure out a way to explain it. <laughs> yeah, that's the hard part. Understanding it and explaining it. Two, two, two things, man. And so sometimes education is like that. Sometimes education is you turn the back of your mind, it hits you, and you simply can't go back to sleep. You know, both those things are education. He finishes up. Glaucon says, no question. And Socrates explains all of the images. Let me explain this allegory, my friend. The cave is the world we see and experience. The light of the fire is the sun. The journey upwards out of the cave is the journey of the soul into the intellectual world. Remember the illustration. I believe that in our world, the idea of goodness appears last of all and is seen only with an effort. And when we do see it, we realize it is the universal author of all things beautiful and right, we then realize that goodness is the parent of light and the lord of light in this visible world and the immediate source of reason and truth in the intellectual world. And that this is the power upon which he, who would act rashly, either in public or private life, must focus his efforts. So at the very end there, he gives us an explanation of, of all the imagery. Do you know the I don't. I don't know where it is. Yeah, okay. No worries. No, it's a different one. Uh, of course. <laughs> because mischief. There you go. So there you go. Questions? <laughs> Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques. So again, at the end there, he explains it. And I know we've beat it quite to death, and hopefully you get the idea about it. If the idea is that, there's, that once you've got into that world, you, you can go never back. go back. Yeah. So once you see something you can't unsee? When you see something you can't unsee.